Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the ancient of days, the God of glory, the God who comes down to fill his people with the grace and strength and power. Father, the hour has come. Come and have your way tonight. We do not have any strength of our own, O oh Lord Jesus. But we know that, Father, when you come down among your people, you begin to strengthen them. You begin to activate every component of their being by the power of your word. Indeed, we have come to hear your word tonight. Mighty Jesus, come and take over tonight. Come and speak to us tonight. Come and sanctify your children by your word. The hour has come, O oh Lord. We recognize our sins our unrighteousness, and so we call on you tonight, and uh, we are asking for mercy. We are asking for the forgiveness of our sins. In so many ways, Lord, we have sinned. But Father, like the prodigal son, we come to you, and we ask for mercy. Wash us clean, mighty Jesus, that we shall be whiter than snow, Lord, Help us to love you the way we should, mighty God. Fill us with your strength, O oh Jesus. That would separate us from you. Father, let that be taken away from us, and that is sin. We give ourselves to you, Jesus. We come to you tonight with a heart of thankfulness for the great things you are doing and you have been doing for your children. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for never casting us away from your presence. Father, we give you glory. Help us, even as we have come tonight, to unite with you in your word. Reveal yourself to us, O God. Father, take over tonight. Let your light be heavy tonight. Let your light be so dense as to blind the eyes of the wicked. Let your light take away every darkness in our hearts. Father, in this night's fellowship, Help us to have greater confidence in your word. In spite of the difficult times we go through, Father, we know you are with us. We know you will see us through. Come and have your way, Jesus. Let your precious blood speak to us. Let your precious blood liberate us from every captivity. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. You are an awesome God. You are a gracious God. You are the center of our existence, the center of our being. The love you have for us is boundless. Your love for us is amazing. Father, we thank you. King of glory, we thank you. Even your servant, whom you are going to use tonight, Father, fill him with your spirit. As it has pleased you to appoint him in a time like this to be your messenger, Father, may you also strengthen him for the message. May he never deviate, Lord. May he never give his own message. But let him give your own message, your own gospel. Father, because this is your gospel, we know that as many that have come tonight to drink from this well of salvation shall indeed find life. Father, thank you. Touch us tonight. Touch us in your word and by your word. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Mighty name we pray with 
สร้างสุดเด่นเอเมมาเดเมมอาเดเมมมาเรียบพลับกัน I have the pleasure tonight to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. Today, our journey with our Blessed Mother to Jesus continues. Mother leading us to her son, who is the water of life. She wants us to drink from that water of life. My dear friends, every time we come to this ministry to listen to the word of God, we have the opportunity to drink from the water of life. Jesus is that water of life. Our blessed mother wants us to drink from that water tonight, and may we drink and have full from this water in the name of Jesus. Amen, and amen, and amen. My dear friends, tonight I have the pleasure to welcome all of us to the hearts of Jesus. And many ministries, and we shall be taking our reading from Psalm 105, verse 40 to 41. Psalm 105, verse 40 to 41, and I will be reading from the New Revised the Standard Version. Catholic edition. They asked, and he brought quails, and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and the water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like water, like river, and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear people of God, we have just taken a reading from Psalm 105, verse 40 to 41. And there, the Bible tells us how God's mercy and the kindness visited His people, the people of Israel. In the wilderness, in their state of want, God did not abandon them, but God provided for them. God cannot abandon His children, that we know. He always come to be with them. He always come to make a way for them. Even where there appear to be no way, my dear people of God, this mighty Jesus has gathered us this night to feed us with the water from Him, from Him who is the Rock. Jesus is the Tana Rock, the rock from where the water of life gushes forth. My dear friends, 
We know that water comes out from the rock. And we know that Jesus, who is the rock of salvation, the rock upon which we stand and we cannot sink, the rock from where cometh or gushes forth the water of life. When we go to him, we cannot sink. When we go to him, we drink the water of life. My dear friends, consider the Israel's exodus from Egypt. It was a struggle. Just like our spiritual life is a struggle. Everything about the journey to the promised land was a struggle. Even though that God was one who gave them a promise, to give them a promised land, to lead them even to the promised land, not that he was going to allow them to lead themselves, but it was a struggle for the people of God. They had so much needs, overwhelming needs. They faced a constant stream of dangers and uncertainties in the wilderness. That appears to capture the situation we go through even in our own spiritual journey. And they must have begun to ask God so many questions. They must have had constant questions that needed answers. Moses would receive these questions from them. Moses continued to give them promises from God that God will see them through. But they still had doubts. Just like us, we look at the scripture, we see the promises of God. But in the midst of the troubles, in the midst of the journey of salvation, the journey to our faith, the journey of faith, we have so many questions. And even doubts begin to come in. Maybe God doesn't really care. Maybe these promises are not actually for me. So what's in the matter? The Egyptians were after them. Pharaoh did not give up fighting the people of Israel. Even after he asked them to go. The mighty Egyptian army came against God's people in the wilderness. It appears as if troubles continue to emerge from every angle. By the way, they had no signpost <laughs> to guide them to the promised land. So how would they know where to go? Put yourself in the midst of the crowd of the people of Israel living the land of captivity, to the land of promise, no signposts, no reserve of food. And this is desert, so no hope for water, no hope for food. Think about that. Yet, Moses told them, trust God, God will provide. If anybody would believe Moses, such a person has faith. And God wants us to believe him in our journey of faith. Where we believe God who have faith. And as a matter of fact, we cannot even please God without faith. And that is the word of God of Hebrew eleven verse six. No one can please God without faith. It is impossible. To please God that faith. Yet without provisions, 
without material provisions, without samples, without GPS, these people went on a journey, a long journey indeed. My dear people of God, when we recall this experience of the people of God, we find a situation that captures what we go through. Problems that appear not to be ending. Problems that seem impossible to solve. Difficulties that seem too great to conquer. Uncertainties and questions that seem not to have solution. But even in all these situations that we find in our spiritual journey, God promises to us that He is there with us. That He is the rock that will not allow us to sink. Imagine the, the storm in the desert. Imagine the strong wind in the desert. Imagine the, the scorching sun in the desert. All these things will be threatening to kill them. But the Bible says that none of them died because God was with them. They began to die only when they offended God so much because they have doubted the provisions and the benevolence of our God. And God allowed some fiery serpents to begin to, to bite them. But when they trusted God, God did not even allow their sandals to wear. No, nobody was sick. Nobody was hungry. God did not even allow their clothes to wear or to tear. God took care of them. Beyond their imaginations. If you ask them, how are you able to survive this kind of a arid land without much provisions, without basic material materials to su to sustain life? They will tell you that God did it. That is the message. My dear people of God, the almighty God that we serve is with us in the journey we are going through. He will not allow us to wear away. He will not allow us to sink out of sight. Yes, difficulties must emerge. Problems, challenges, uncertainties, reason for questions, they must surely come. They must surely arise. But the story of the people of Israel, how God, in spite of their hopelessness, came to provide for them in the desert, reminds us that God is always with us and can always provide for us, and that even in our moments of uncertainties and troubles, these are actually moments for God to show that He is a mighty God. Imagine the people of Israel in the desert, a land without water. Yet God provided water for them in the desert. He asked Moses to strike the rock. And from that rock, water came forth. Is God talking to somebody tonight? From that rock, water came forth. And they were satisfied. The Bible tells us that Jesus 
is that rock. First Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, And they all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Jesus. God is talking to somebody tonight. The rock is Jesus. If Jesus is the rock and we stand on the rock, we cannot sink. We ought to have confidence that our God is able to hold us strong when we go through trials. Psalm 18 verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, in whom I take refuge, in whom I take shield. He is my shield. He is the horn of my salvation. With my stronghold. That is the testimony of someone who knows God. When we know God as our rock, He will not only help us to stand strong, He will not only deliver us, He will not only be our God, but He will also be the one to give us the proceeds from the rock. For example, water can come from the rock, and Jesus is our water. Let us go to him tonight. For he is able to provide for each and every one of us. Let us trust him. Look at how he made the impossible to be possible in the desert. Where there seemed to be no food, he provided the food. How do I know? Because the Bible tells me so. Remember the reading of today? Psalm 105 verse 40. They asked and he provided quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He provided quail. What's the quail? You know, uh, it's a bed. A bed. But he provided this bed in uncountable numbers. All they needed to do was to catch the bed. They didn't have to fight it or, or run after it or try to catch it. No, the bed would just be there, no struggle. They don't fight for the blessing. God had already kept it there. And just make the bear to stay and wait for them to come and take it and kill and eat. In the midst of our hopelessness, God is not hopeless. He's not. He provides for us and makes it possible for us to get our testimonies without a struggle. I mean, God doesn't struggle, you know that. We do. But God has the strategy to provide a solution. I like to think of this school called SSS. The first S is uh, struggle, which is for human beings. The second S is a strategy, which is a formula we need to come out of the struggle. And by so doing, we are seeking solution. Any person who is going through a struggle seeks for a strategy to get a solution. So solution is the aim, the goal. So that, sec that third S is, is solution. First S, struggle. Second S, strategy. Third S is solution. And only God brings the strategy to bring the solution. Now, the people of God were in the desert. They were struggling with hunger. With material need. They were afraid they would die. God 
provided the solution. The quest. He made it possible for them to just catch the quest. Think of Peter. Who fished all night, caught nothing, struggled. But in the morning, he met Jesus. The one that gives solution to problems. The one that comes to our struggle. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, cast deep. He told him where to cast. Just pointing his finger there. And Peter obeyed Jesus. And that is the strategy. When we are struggling, the strategy we need to get the solution is to listen to God. Not to man, to God. Not ourselves, to God. When we listen to God, we get the answer. He will lead us. It may not be overnight, but He will surely, step by step, bring us closer and closer until He brings us there to the solution. All that Peter needed all this while, all the night, all that he needed was the word of God. And that word of God came in the morning. Like a silent dew. Like a refreshing dew. And when he obeyed the word of God, God gave him solution. An abundance of of fish. Tell me anyone you know from the scripture to today who have had the culture of listening to God who regretted it. Nobody. God never promised us that strong, that trials, temptations will not come. He never promised us that storm will not come. He never said that challenges will not come. In fact, he said they will come. John 16, verse 3. I've told you this since. In the world, you shall have trials. You, in the world, you shall have troubles. But be of good cheer. Troubles will come. Storm will come. They will surely come. Not that may come. No, they will. They must come. And that is why Jesus wants us to stand on the rock. Because those who stand on the rock can never sink when the storm comes. They stand strong. They stand strong. They cannot be carried away by the waves. Because they are anchored on the rock. The sheep can never be carried away by the waves. The canoe, you know, the boat cannot be carried away by the waves. If it is anchored on the rock. Jesus is that rock. Would he provide for his people in the desert and fail to provide for us in our own desert experience? In our own spiritual desert? Come on. God will provide. He will provide, my dear friends. Perhaps you are going through some immigration problems and you, you tell yourself, when will this end? And when you look around, when you think around, when you think deep, you don't see anything that seems to be light coming. Well, let me tell you. The night before the God provided the quails for the people of Israel, it was a night of, of hopelessness. It was a night of darkness. There was no hope in sight. But in the morning, God filled the camp with quails, with birds. And the birds were not even running away. <laughs> no struggle. Why? Because God is involved. When God is involved, he makes it possible for us to get to the blessing he keeps for or he has kept for us. After this, I'm sure we took the example of Peter. My dear friends in Christ, God is there for us. Look at this same Peter. When 
the tax collectors confronted Jesus and his disciples and said they must pay tax. Jesus, that was a challenge. That was a problem for the disciples. They were wondering, oh my goodness, we don't have money. That, to them, that's a problem. But Jesus didn't even look at it as a problem. Because it was not a problem. Jesus deals with our problems. What we call problems. He doesn't have problem. Because problem cannot stand his presence. Mountains cannot stand his presence. Does the Bible not tell us that before his presence, even the mountains will melt? <laughs> the mountains will melt before the presence of our mighty God. That very mountain, that big problem, that obstacle, that Goliath, the stronghold will begin to melt like wax before the presence of the Lord. This is not my word. This is the scripture. Psalm 97 verse 5. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of heaven and earth. Do you hear that? Psalm 104 verse 32. And the Bible says, He looks on the earth and he trembles. He touches the mountains and then they begin to smoke. Can you imagine that? The mighty God. Micah chapter 1 verse 7. Sorry, Micah chapter 1 verse uh, 4 says, The mountains will melt beneath him. And even the valleys will split apart like wax before the fire. Like water rushing down a slope. Our mighty God. The, the scripture is full of testimonies of the powerfulness of our God. Okay? If, you, if our God sneezes, the, the, the blast of air from his nostrils will blow away cancer. Will blow away the problems. Will blow away the strong man. Blow them away to the abyss. Nothing can stand him. Nothing. In fact, the Bible says that the wicked shall perish in the presence of the Lord. People of God. This God who will serve is able to provide for us. Is able to see us through. Is able to bring us out of the problems we go through. You see, every time I listen to people Problems. They talk to me about problems. Problems. And after talking to me about problems, I begin to talk to God about the problems they come with. You know why? Because I cannot solve the problem myself, but I know I have a God who solves the problems, who can bring water from the rock. If a problem is hard, you say it is like a rock. So rock, in a sense, can also represent, you know, harden the problems, stubborn problems, like cancer, like terminal diseases, like poverty. Name it. But you see, whenever a rock turns to water, it is a solution. Because really, the opposite of rock is water. Imagine, rock is hard. Water is liquid. Water can never resist pressure. Water can never resist you. Whatever you want water to do, that water would. Because there's no strength of its own. From stubbornness to meekness can only be the power of God. Water can also be seen as meekness in a sense. But look at that stubborn problem that's like a rock. God can make water to come out of that rock. God can make solution to come out of that problem. My dear people of God, where are you spiritually? Where are you right now? Are this message is going on. Where are you spiritually? I'm not asking of your geographical location. In the spiritual realm, where is your coordinate? 
Are you in the wilderness? <laughs> are you going through situations that appear to suggest impossible solutions? Well, you see, the good thing is that they seem to be impossible. But that seeming to be impossible doesn't mean that it is impossible. You see, sometimes you are driving on a on a hot day, on a clean, cold, tired road, and uh, you may see something that look like a, a, a pond of water in the future in your, in your, you know, just ahead of you. You you may see that. I'm sure that some of you see that. That's what you call mirage. When you look at it, it seems to be a river, and you may be afraid. Oh, let me not go further. There's a river there. But you see, when you come, they don't see it. It seems to be there, but it's not there. It is a, one of the strategies of the enemy to discourage a child of God who is on a journey. He provides or invents some spiritual mirage to tell you, to suggest to you, stop, stop, because you are going to enter into that ditch That is what he will suggest. But if you defy him, if you resist him, just like James 4 verse 7 tells us, resist him and he will flee. If you resist him, you find out actually he had lied to you. There was no river there. There was no obstacle. This man he has told you, don't marry this man. Because this man is a witchcraft. This man is from a very bad orientation. This man is a killer. This man is this and that. You find out that this man is not even who he has told you that he is. Is God talking to somebody tonight? Let us listen to God, not to the enemy. Do not forget. Man always have the struggle, not God. God always have the solution. When God remembers you, when you trust Him, and He sees your faithfulness, and He comes to show you mercy, He gives you the strategy that will take you from the struggle to solution. Because strategy is like a bridge that connects struggle to solution. <laughs> you know, think of it that way. That's a bridge that leads a struggle person to a place of solution. Strategy. The strategy is to listen to God. To listen to our God, our mighty Jesus. If we listen to him, we shall have solution. No wonder our blessed mother, the ever virgin, the woman who wants us to come out of the struggles we are going through and come to the solution that God has given for us, has given us a strategy to navigate through the terrain of struggle to the camp of solution. And that strategy is listening to God. No wonder she tells us from her very mouth in John 2 verse 5, listen to him. Listening to him. Peter listened to him and he caught a great fish. Abraham listened to him and he got a ram. A ram on a mountain. Can you imagine that? Do you find rams in the mountain? Or on the mountain? Do you find one? That is not their territory. But this ram was there caught up in the ticket. Caught up in the ticket because God does not want the ram to run away. So the ram had a, his horn hooked, caught up in the ticket, in the bush. So he cannot run away. It may attempt to run away when Abraham, Abraham was coming, but because it was hooked, he cannot even make a step. So he just stayed there. And all that Abraham needed to do was just to come and catch it. 
because he listened to God. And that is what our blessed brother is talking to us. To listen to God so that he shall be well with us. She's not telling us to listen to God for, for it to be well with her. He's already well with her. But it is for our own good. Abraham listened and they, that saved the life of, of his son, Isaac. And God brought a ram in place of Isaac for a sacrifice. Listen to God. Listen. When we listen to God, we see what I come out of the rock. When we listen to God, the problem we melt. Is God talking to somebody? The problem we melt. Because God Himself is there to make it to, to happen. God is there to see us through. God can turn a rock into a pool. I'm telling you. Why am I talking of water coming up from the rock? Now, I'm, I'm not telling you that even the rock itself can turn into a pool by the power of God. And the psalmist knows that. In Psalm 114 verse 8. And the Bible says, that the Lord turned the rock into a pond, into a pool of water. A hard rock into, into springs of water. Please check your Bible. Check your own Bible. Psalm 114 verse 8. That the Lord turned a rock into a pool, into a water. A pool of water. Imagine driving by a road and seeing a huge mountain, a huge rock before you. And then you are coming back from work. It is no more a rock. You do not see a rock again. You see an ocean, a lake. Only God can do that. Science can never invent anything that will turn rock to water. It's a miracle that God can provide that can do that. Psalm 107, verse 35. And the Bible says, He turns a desert into pools of water. He turns even a dry land into flowing springs. Psalm 107, verse 35b. Is God talking to somebody tonight? <laughs> there is nothing that God cannot do. Even he who turned the rock to the pool of water can also turn the pool of water to rock if he wants. Our God cannot be limited. Jesus. When you are going through a tough time, know that God is able to make a way for you. When you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, know that God is able to take you through it. And like David, you turn back and you say, the Lord has helped you to pass through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, if you read that Psalm 23, you find that David was talking as someone who had passed through the valley of the shadow of death. He wasn't in it when he was talking about it. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death and he had no evil because he saw the hand of the Lord with him. The hand of the Lord leading him. Only God knows how many snakes or scorpions or tigers, wild cats that came to eat up David when we were going through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, the valley of the shadow of death is a pathway of death. 
How can a lion be on the way you pass through if not that the hand of God is upon you? He went through the valley of the shadow of death. When people go, to, go through and then they die, they don't even see the end. The Bible says that David went through it and he lived to tell the story. Do I need to remind you that you shall live to tell the story? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 15. And the Bible says, The Lord led me through the vast and terrifying wilderness with venomous snakes and scorpions. Think about that. Wilderness with venomous snakes and scorpions. One snake was enough to kill the but look at the Lord saw the, his child through a, a, a valley, a pathway, a wilderness infested with so many venomous snakes and scorpions, and none of them touched him. The child of God. You know why? The hand of God is upon him. If the hand of God is upon you, you go through that trouble and you will testify. You go through that sickness and you testify. God never promised us that we shall not go through troubles. Okay? Actually, He promises us that we shall go through troubles. I've told you that in just a few minutes. But He promises us that He will be our peace in the trouble. John 16, verse 33. That's what He's telling us. In the world, you shall have troubles, but in me, you shall have peace. You shall have peace. That is a promise of God for us. We shall have peace. Let us trust Him. Let us depend on Him. He is able to see us through the situation we go through. Be it sickness, be it immigration problem or problems, be it marital problem, whatever it is, would God see the psalmist through the wilderness infested with the venomous snakes and scorpions and he lead to tell the story, our bet comes to you and abandons you? Come on. Come on. God cannot abandon us. We can abandon God for sure. We have, been do, we have been doing that. But He will never abandon us. Because of His love for us. He will never abandon us. In fact, in Hebrew 13 verse 5, the Bible says, Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. This is our Lord ministering to us. Telling us, even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, even when you go through the valley of dry bones, I will be with you. I will not abandon you. But Lord, why would you allow me to go through the valley of the shadow of death? Why would you allow me to go through the valley of dry bones? Why would I go through these situations? Why? Oh my goodness. Is that your question, my friend? Anyway, when God allows us to go through such a tunnel, go through such situations, it is to strengthen us, it is to make us to believe more in Him, to mature in Him, to know that He's able to provide for us, to protect us, to make a name for Himself through our testimonies. It means that God wants a testimony. He wants a testimony. He wants to give you a testimony. As he's giving you the testimony, he wants to glorify himself through your testimony, through your situations that you go through. The Lord is talking to us. Let us listen to him. Let us trust in him who is able 
to bless each and every one of us. Child of God, do you hear that? That the Lord who is able to turn the rock into water is talking to you. He's talking to us. He did it for the people of Israel. He is very willing to do it for us if we would be able to trust him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Something I have said before, which I wish to repeat again, is that every time we find the rock before us, problem, you know, obstacles before us, or mountains before us, let it be made clear tonight that this is a place, a moment of miracle. Because when God moves the mountain, that is a miracle. You testify it. Say, for example, doctor may have diagnosed um, cancer in somebody's body. And, I mean, that's a mountain. That is a, a rock. That's a big problem. That's an obstacle. That's like a venomous snake or scorpion. That's like somebody being a wilderness. Now, the Lord comes to move the cancer away. Would you not testify to the glory of God? Of course you will. And what will be your testimony? The Lord is my healer. So, how will the world know that the, the Lord is your healer? If not that he heals you and he gives the testimony. How would you know that the Lord is your healer? If not that he heals you of that disease. So even when that disease comes, even when that trouble comes, the Lord wants glory to himself through that situation. So let us begin to look at the obstacles, the challenges, the seemingly impossible things that come our way as opportunities for miracles. Let us not see the obstacle. Let us not see the storm, but let us see the miracle. That was the, the problem of Peter when he was thinking. It's all this time Peter was looking at Jesus, focusing on Jesus, and he was walking on the water. The enemy was not happy about that. He wasn't happy to see Peter walking on the water. The same enemy is not happy to see you walking over obstacles. He's not happy. He knows that when you are walking over obstacles, walking over nails, over pythons, over snakes and uh, scorpions, when you are walking over fire without being burnt, when you are passing through fire without being burnt, when you are passing through the river without being uh, drowned, the enemy knows that your strength is from the Lord. And he's not happy. So he comes to threaten you. He brings a storm. He, he wants to distract you. He wants to distract us. We should not allow him to do that. Let us listen to the Lord. Let us listen to him. Look at all the troubles that came to the mother of Jesus. Time will not permit us to talk about how Mary suffered to go to Egypt, carrying Jesus to an unknown land with so the husband. Imagine such a young family, a young girl. Mary was a very young girl. You know, very young girl when she conceived. Imagine such a fragile lady. All that she went through, getting up in the midnight, I've been told, let's run away from here. Herod is after his child. And got into darkness, heading to a journey that was unplanned. Imagine how far they may have gone before sun arose, only to see the desert facing them. A desert, a place of hopelessness, a place of no promise of except the promise of scorching sun, a promise of suffering. Have you gone through the desert before? Do you not 
see the scorching sun. The sun there is unforgiving. The sun in the in the wilderness, in the in the desert, oh my goodness, they are unforgiving. By morning they, they begin to smite. They don't even wait till noon. They start smiting from morning. Any little dew in the land that came in the night, they dry it up. They carry some gulls of, uh, of sand, filling the eyes of travelers. So I don't see, blinding the eyes. People who travel in the desert, they usually cover themselves with some clothes. Some thick clothes. Not because it is cold. It, of course, in the night, it's very cold. Very, very unforgivingly cold. Very, very. But why do they wear that even in the daytime? Because of the ghost of sand. The, the wind is blowing and carrying sand. Putting it on you. So you have to cover your head. Otherwise, you look like the desert. <laughs> you see that? That was the situation that Mary went through with her son and with her husband. The sun was heavy. In the night, it was very cold. In the day, it was very hot. Two extremes. That's enough to cause, you know, somebody to break. She went through all that. But praise God, she was able to tell the story because she went through that with Jesus. When we go through obstacles, we go through with Jesus. When we believe and we know that Jesus is with us in the struggles, we go through. Let me tell you up front, you will get to the end with testimonies. You will make it. You will see. You will go through. The desert, heat or cold or strong wind or, or sand did not kill any member of the Holy Family. They passed through the desert wise, going to Egypt and coming back from Egypt. They didn't die there. Some animals die in the desert and they don't even smell. Why? Because the sun will dry up the blood, dry up the liquid in them. So they won't smell. In fact, when animals die in the desert, the animals will get will be caked or baked. They will be baked under the hot sun. They will be baked. You don't go through the the, the desert sand or desert highway with barefoot. Why are you to try it? Well, how can you survive it? Because this, the the soil will be so hot. But you see. The Holy Family went through all these. But because the very water of life, the very rock of salvation was with them, they were able to tell the story. They were able to live to tell the story. Job was able to live to tell the story at the end. And the Lord blessed him more than he was blessed before. You shall live to tell the story, my dear friend. Let us trust God. If we can let to listen to God and do what those to do, we shall transit from struggle to solution. God is a strategy. And let me repeat myself again, just to sink the message into our hearts that the strategy to translate us from struggle to solution is listening to the word of God. And our Holy Mother is the voice in the desert telling us, listen to my son. Listen to him, John 2, verse 5. Do whatever he tells you to do, John 2, verse 5. Mama is an advocate of, of the word of her son. If we do what God tells us to do, it shall be well with us. The Bible says, obey the Lord and it shall be well with you. Look at Joseph. Joseph was told to take the child and the mother, and go to Egypt. Quick, quick, quick. He obeyed. And when he got to Egypt, everything happened the way God planned it. 
listening to the word of God. We cannot compromise. We cannot afford to to paint it. It is it, it once anything takes us from the word of God, run away. You may be going through your wilderness. Oh, Mary went through her wilderness. Jesus went through his wilderness. Joseph went through his wilderness. The saints we asked for their prayers and intercession went through their wilderness. We ought to go through our wilderness. And perhaps you are going through your wilderness right now. Perhaps you are wandering the wilderness. But you see, let me tell you. Even in the wilderness, God provides bread. He who is the bread of life provides bread in the wilderness. Did he not provide for the people of Israel manna from heaven? Of which in our time Jesus tells us, I am that very bread that came down from heaven. Did he not provide water for them? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. If in a place without food, God provided food, and in a place without water, God provided water, it should end this message that God indeed can, in our hopelessness, in a state of hopelessness, make it possible for us to testify. He can bring living, uh, you know, uh, like flowing water, like a river in the desert. Only God can do that. Look at Hag Hagar. Hagar was in the desert praying for death. The sun was dying. All that the sun needed was water. There was no water. She herself needed water. Of course, she didn't even count herself as worthy of any water. When, this daughter, when the, the baby was in need of water and could not drink water. And the milk of the mother could not flow. Because the mother had no water inside. In that sort of hopelessness, she, she knew that death had come. And she left the child to die instead of watching the child die before her eyes. But God came in that situation and provided water in the wilderness. If after listening to this message, you don't trust God in the situation you're going through, then you are doing the service to God. God wants us to trust Him. Okay? He can make water to appear in the wilderness, not just like a cup of water or two. He can make a river to flow. Who can drink the whole river? Who are you? Even fish, they can't even finish the drinking the water in the river. But the Lord is able to provide abundance of blessings, abundance of food, abundance of provisions, even in our scarcity. Let us trust Him. <laughs> God keeps his promises. God keeps his covenant. He promises to be with us. Let us not forget that with God all things are possible. Okay? That is to say that nothing is impossible with our God. Another way to look at it is that no, there's nothing I go through that God cannot solve. Nothing. Okay? That which does not exist, that which God cannot do, that does not exist. All right? Because He can do all things, really. And because He can do all things, we ought to trust Him. We ought to trust Him. How? By standing on His word. On his promises, like Peter, like Mary, like Joseph, like David, like all the saints. Let us believe in his word. Let us believe that he will make a way for us even when, when there seem to be no way. Let us trust in him in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Mighty God, we thank you for this night message. We thank you for speaking to your children tonight. All things belong to you, Jesus. 
You fulfill your plans beyond our expectations and understanding. How great you are, Lord Jesus. How great is your love for us. Mighty God, we have come from north, south, east, and west to this great ministry you are giving to us in a time like this to hear your word. Now we have heard your word. May grace be granted for us to keep your word. Holy Mother, you have ministered to us in John 2 verse 5 to do whatever Jesus tells us to do. Now Jesus has told us to trust him, to trust that he will bring strategy for us to come out of the struggle to a place of solution. Help us to believe him. Help us to, to be faithful. For the Lord is himself is also faithful. Help us to always know with great conviction that our God is great. Greater than the problems that we go through. Bigger than the desert that we go through. Bigger than the storm that threatens us. Bigger than the cancer. Bigger than the terminal diseases. Mama, help us to bear this, to know this. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God. You anticipate our needs and you provide for us. You prevent us from being famished and lost in the woods. You raise the lowly and you make the weak powerful. Oh my goodness. There is nothing you cannot do. Your children that have fallen into the pit of death, you have raised them up and stood them on the rock that sinketh not. You are that rock, Jesus. You are that rock. We bow down to you, Jesus. We bow down in humble adoration. And with deep gratitude to you, we thank you for all you have done. Thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful destiny you have given to us. We stand on your word tonight. We stand on your promises tonight. We believe that in you, nothing is impossible for you to do for your children. Father, I will trust you for everything that we need. We know you will always provide for us. So many of your children are going through situations that are horrible. After listening to this message, Lord, their faith has become strong. Lord, bless them. Let Psalm 107, verse 35 come to pass tonight. For you turned a desert into a pool of water and a dry land into a flowing spring. Let their dry businesses, dry lands, dry marriages, dry relationships begin to experience the inflow, the influx of the fountains of life. Let that spiritual desert in the business be, be destroyed now. That business that has become so dry, but I bring water, bring river, let the river flow into it. River flow into our health, into our being, into our spiritual lives, where we have become spiritually dry, weak in prayer. Father, rejuvenate us tonight with your living water of life and fill us with your power, O oh Lord. Saturate us to the degree that from us, from our loins, even the water will begin to flow from us to others. Because we have received so much from you, that you begin to bless others through us. 
through the overflow, others are blessed. Through the overflow you gave to your son Isaac in Genesis, Lord, you are doing it tonight in the lives of your people. You prospered Isaac in a foreign land. You blessed him. He made him to be great and great in Genesis 26, verse 12 to 13, where he planted a seed in the land, and he reaped a hundred, even the season of famine. And in verse 13, Lord, you made him to become great. He grew into greatness to the point that he became a blessing to everyone around him. From the excess you have given to him, others were living in abundance. Father, we are here to say thank you for you have done it, for you have made us candidates of overflowing springs of, of testimonies. Blessed be your name. We love you, Jesus. We appreciate you, Jesus. Blessed Mother, thank you for being with us tonight and praying for us tonight. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are glorious. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. And we decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, Mother of pray God. for us in the now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, Madam, Amen. And we'll cover the message, Brother Jesus. Amen.